हाई गाइज वेलकम बैक टू प्रोजेक्ट द्रोणा सीरीज वही चल रही है लॉज इन बैंकिंग एंड फाइनेंस एंड द मॉड्यूल इज ऑल्सो द सेम लीगल फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ द इंडियन बैंकिंग सिस्टम चलिए आगे चलने से पहले थोड़ा पीछे चलते हैं लेट्स रिवाइंड लिटल एंड सी वॉट वीव डन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज तो हमने पिछली वीडियो में बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट कवर की इन द लास्ट टू वीडियोज इन फैक्ट वी सॉ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ बैंकिंग it was covered in section 5b remember what can be a bank an organization or an institution that accepts deposits for the purpose of investment or lending and these deposits must be withdrawable on demand through check draft order or otherwise and that these deposits must be withdrawable by check This clause was provided for in section 49A of the Banking Regulation Act. कहने का भाव ये है कि ये जो deposits banks accept करते हैं, they must certainly be withdrawable by a check at any given point of time under section 49A of the BR Act. फिर हमने study करा कि bank खोलने के लिए license लेना जरूरी है. This has been given in section 22 of the Banking Regulation Act. और ये लाइसेंस देगा कौन रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैड सीन द लिस्ट ऑफ परमिटेड बिजनेस दैट द बैंक्स आर अलाउड टू अंडरटेक दे हैव बीन एल्यूसिडेटेड इन सेक्शन सिक्स वन ऑफ बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट इसी के साथ हमने एक और इंटरेस्टिंग चीज देखी थी दैट द वर्ड्स बैंक बैंकिंग या बैंकिंग कंपनी कैन नॉट बी यूज बाय जस्ट एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन and this has been elucidated in section 7 of the banking regulation act ek aur bahut hi interesting cheez study kari thi humne pichli video mein that was the prohibited business under the banking regulation act ye describe kiye gaye hain section 8 of br act mein and these are the business that banks cannot undertake some of them include trading and undertaking any business that involves trading risk so that automatically means that any business that involves buying selling or bartering of goods is strictly prohibited trading se aap kya samajhte hain trading ka simplest matlab hai for example uh, the local kiryana guy around your house is a trader why because he buys goods at a lower price and sells them to you at mrp so what he gets at wholesale rates he sells to you for mrp and that is the money that he earns as a trader so banks are not allowed to undertake those kind of businesses right any business that involves trading or that involves undertaking of trading risks banks have been strictly prohibited to undertake such businesses then there was also an additional clause in the permitted business list that was that banks are allowed to manage sell and realize any property that it possesses towards the satisfaction of its claim yani ke somebody has let's take an example here somebody has taken a home loan aur usne apni property aap bank ke paas girvi rakhi hai now the property is worth is 1 crore and the loan he had taken is 20 lakhs and he had made the um, payments of let's say 4 lakhs and now the remaining 16 lakhs he has not paid to you so he is a defaulter in that terms or you can say that the asset has become npa or non performing asset now a bank has been given the permission to manage that property sell that property or realize that property towards the satisfaction of its claim which means the bank can actually sell that property and claim its money back the 1600000 rupees or and the interest on it and of course any extra charges that have incurred during the legal proceedings however the bank cannot benefit from such an enterprise cannot profit from such an enterprise so if you sell a house worth 1 crore for 1 crore 
and your claims including all the charges comes out to be 17.5 lakhs that is the only amount of money that you are supposed to receive and return the remaining money back to the borrower so this has been clarified under section 9 of the banking regulation act only that a banking company cannot hold an immovable property howsoever acquired theek hai except for its own use theek hai for a pre- period greater than 7 years and this 7 year seven year period can be extended to another 5 years theek hai with special permission so kehne ka bhav ye hai ki agar bank ne aisi koi property seize kar li hai to wo 7 saal se zyada use hold nahi kar sakta the bank has to sell that property the only properties that the bank is allowed to hold for a period longer than let's say 7 years and 5 years ki special permission lekar bhi Uh, the bank is allowed to hold a property for longer than 12 years only if the bank is using that property for its own use and it cannot be one of these properties the disputed non performing asset properties now folks let's have a look at the session outlines as to what we are going to cover in this video in this video we are going to discuss the reserve bank of india act what it is what it covers and what not of course once we are going to study the reserve bank of india act we would also like to cover the role of rbi and its authority scope and then of course the scope of government on the indian banking sector and whilst we are at it let's cover some other authorities also let's get started with the reserve bank of india act the act was enabled in the year 1934 and in this act lies the constitution of reserve bank of india as described under section 3 of the rbi act primarily the rbi act covers the currency issue and regulation the monetary stability and reserves and also the management of currency and the credit system in indian banking primarily as you have seen in the monetary policy video the role of monetary policy and stabilization of it lies in the hands of reserve bank of india so this act certainly covers those points is act mein bataya gaya hai reserve bank of india ke bare mein because this very act led to the creation of reserve bank of india to rbi kya hai uska authority scope kya hai पावर्स क्या हैं उसके फंक्शंस क्या हैं एज अ फाइनेंशियल बॉडी इन द इंडियन सिस्टम एंड व्हाट इज इट्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन उसकी संरचना का आधार क्या है ये बताया गया है प्राइमरीली इस एक्ट में एंड दिस एक्ट डज नॉट रियली डील विद द रेगुलेशन ऑफ बैंकिंग सिस्टम डायरेक्टली इन आर कंट्री एक्सेप्ट फॉर अ फ्यू सेक्शन हेयर एंड देयर जैसे कि सेक्शन फोर्टी में बताया गया है अबाउट द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द कैश रिजर्व ऑफ शेड्यूल्ड बैंक with the rbis this happens in a format called the currency chests and the other reserve ratios uh, we'll go and discuss them in detail as we move on in these videos let's have a look at the screen right now this is essentially the order in which these bodies have been arranged so sabse upar hai central government then there is the reserve bank of india whose central office is at mumbai and then this reserve bank of india essentially its management comprises of a central board and that board comprises of one governor and four directors maximum it is not necessary that the four directors are always there but that is the composition of the central board of the rbi one governor and maximum four directors all right folks let's move ahead let's discuss the matter of currency issue and management in india Well this power has been vested in the hands of the Reserve Bank under the section 22 of RBI Act. Is section ke under RBI ke paas authority hai to issue notes of all denominations starting from rupees 2 to rupees 10000. 10000 ka note aap logon ne dekha hai? <laughs> hota bhi hai ya nahi hota? Well we'll keep this question on hold until the end of this video. I am pretty sure we all are in for a surprise. However, 
Before we move any further, I just said that the RBI has the authority to issue currency notes starting from rupees 2 and go on up to rupees 10,000. And we all know that the governor of RBI signs the currency notes. However, my question is, what about a rupee 1 note? Have you ever seen it? Let's have a look at this picture. And when we see, uh, have a look at the detail of this note, what do we see? That the note has been signed by the Secretary Ministry of Finance. Well, that is because the rupee one note is issued by the Ministry of Finance in India. And as of coins, coins are an entirely different matter. Although RBI has the authority to distribute coins in India, RBI does not issue coins. Coins are issued separately under the Coinage Act. Chaliye, ab aate hai section 20 par. Section 20 essentially makes RBI as the banker to central government. We have discussed Indian financial system in the video, mein bhi discuss kiya hai. but now we are discussing it from a legal point. So essentially, in terms of Section 20 of the RBI Act 1934, RBI has the obligation to undertake the receipts and payments of the central government and to carry out the exchange, remittance and other banking operations, including the management of public debt of the union. These lines have been taken verbatim from the RBI site's FAQs. Isse note ki jega. Under section 21A of the RBI Act, state governments can enter into an agreement with the Reserve Bank of India for it to act as their banker. And as of now, such agreements exist between RBI and all the state governments, except the government of Sikkim. To ab hume pata chala, that under section 20, the RBI gets the power to become the banker to central government. Unki transactions, unke debts, unki remittances ko manage karne ki authority, RBI ko section 20 mein milti hai. And under 21A, the state governments can also enter into an agreement with the RBI for handling all such transactions. There is another concept, that is, that RBI also provides ways and means advances to central as well as state governments. Abhi ways and means advances kya hote hain? These are temporary advances that the RBI lends to the government of India whenever there is a difference between its revenues and expenditures. That is whenever it suddenly needs cash. Ye advances state or central government ko dono ko diye jate hain. But essentially these were meant for state governments. For the context of this video, I think this much information should suffice. However, for the ones who are more curious and would like to know the ways and means advances in a little bit of detail, I have left a small text file on the Google Drive of Project Drona. I shall leave you the link in the video and you can go and access it from there. So, now we have seen that the RBI Act primarily Reserve Bank of India ko empower karti hai in different ways and define karti hai uski apni constitution, uski apne roles and functions. But as of RBI's control on other banks, that ways RBI is essentially empowered by the Banking Regulation Act only. And it is empowered for different things like we had discussed earlier, licensing of banks, the appointment and removal of banking personnel, the regulation of banking business, giving directions to banks, and their inspection and supervision. And not only this, RBI has been given the authorities under the Banking Regulation Act to conduct audits, to gather credit information, collection, its collation, etc. Credit information uh, we will discuss in another separate video also, where I'll discuss how uh, the various uh, loans and uh, advances offered to public are being gathered as data to be offered to other prospective uh, lenders so that they know to whom they are lending. And then there are concerns like amalgamations and binding up of banks. And then imposition of penalties as well. So, these authorities are given to RBI in the Banking Regulation Act. Now, we have seen that 
about the authority of Reserve Bank of India on the banking sector in general. Now let's also have a look at the government's authority in the same area. Well, for starters, the appointment of RBI's governors is handled by the government of India. And not only that, the government essentially holds the authority to issue directions to the Reserve Bank of India as well. If it deems fit, the government of India can issue certain directions to the Reserve Bank of India. This authority has been given to the government of India under Section 7.1 of the RBI Act only. And of course, these directions must be issued only after a consultation with the governor. And not only that, the government of India is also an appellate authority over the decisions taken by RBI. Kehne ka bhaav ye hai that if there are certain decisions that have been taken by RBI and one needs to appeal against them, one needs to approach the government of India. Those decisions could be, for example, the appointment or removal of certain banking personnel or the cancellation of a banking license. So if some bank's license gets cancelled and it wants to appeal against that decision of Reserve Bank of India, it needs to approach the Union of India. And hey, not only that, the government of India also holds the authority to suspend the operations of Banking Regulation Act. So ultimately, as a body, RBI governs the financial sector in India in terms of policy making and financial stability. But the government certainly, certainly holds an authority over it. Iske alawa, bhi kai powers hain central government ke paas. For example, the rule making power under section 52 and 45Y of the Banking Regulation Act. And the power for approvals for the formation of subsidiaries. Not only that, the government also has the power to acquire undertakings of banks if it feels that the interests of public are not being served or that it can serve the interests of public by acquisition of that body, then the government can acquire it. And not only that, the authority to suspend the business or the amalgamation of banks is also held by the government. And then there is notifications that can be issued in reference to accounts and balance sheets. So, these are essentially the powers that government holds. There are others, but uh, for the purpose of the examination or establishing your fundamentals well in this domain, I think this much should suffice. Nowadays, banks have started offering a multitude of services. These services include selling of insurance products, selling of mutual funds, selling of other financial markets products. So when you're operating in these domains that are not core banking, the bodies in these domains will have an authority over the banks, operations of these areas. Likewise, the taxman of India, the banks deduct tax at source for many entities. So the taxman also exerts an authority in these domains. So these are a couple of other bodies that have an authority in banking domain by virtue of the different businesses that banks have started undertaking. As of now, uh, this is almost what we wanted to cover in the Reserve Bank of India Act and this video. Stay tuned for the next one and thanks for being with me on this one. This is your host signing off on Project Drona. Thanks a lot.